Hi watercolor friends and welcome to my art channel Laurel Heart. I'm grateful that you've found your way here today. If you're um, new, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, I'm glad to have you back with me. I have some great art tips for you in this segment. At least I hope you'll find them helpful. Okay, first of all, who gets interrupted as soon as you start to paint? So this is a tip for those of you with kids. When you want uninterrupted time to paint, just tell your kids to come get you in 30 minutes so you can all clean the house together. You won't see them again for the rest of the day. Your house will remain messy, but you'll get a lot of painting done. And here's one of my personal favorite tips. When you're in the middle of painting, but you also need to make dinner, my favorite thing to make is reservations. That one will save you lots of painting time. Actually, I do want to give you some great tips on brushes today. And this is the tip. Watercolor brushes require good tips. I want to give you a little advice on brushes that I read that I think is worth sharing. This comes from a painter by the name of Daniel Parkhurst. He is emphatic on the subject of using quality painting materials and the need for quality tools. He says, in painting, there is nothing that will cause you more trouble than bad materials. You can get along with few materials, but you cannot get along with bad ones. That is not the place to economize. To do good work is difficult at best. Your tools can make your work harder or easier according to your selection of them. The relative cost of good and bad materials is of slight importance compared with the relative effect on your work. And those are very wise words. So I wholeheartedly agree with this tip. And let me share you something that my son lives by. And this is the quote, the bitterness of low quality lingers long after the sweetness of low price has worn away. So now back to the advice from Mr. Parkhurst on brushes. Don't look upon your brushes as something to get as few of as possible and which you would not get at all if you could help it. There is nothing which comes nearer to yourself than the brush, which carries out your idea in paint. You should be always on the lookout for a good brush, and whenever you run across one, buy it, no matter how many you have already. Don't look twice at a bad brush, and don't begrudge an extra 10 cents in the buying of a good one. If you're sorry to have to pay so much for your brushes, then take more than good care of them. Use them well, and they will last a long time. Then don't always use the same handful. Break in new ones now and again. Keep a dozen or two in use and lay some aside before they are worn out and use newer ones. So when at last you cannot use one anymore, you have others of the same kind which fulfill its place. So I am so glad that I followed this advice in buying up a bunch of my favorite low Cornell brushes. I've touted these brushes in probably every one of my videos. And I think you know by now that they don't make these brushes anymore. So my favorite size is the number eight. Let me just show you how many number eights I have purchased over the years and still have and use because I take, that's a 10, because I take good care of them. And I bet you I could auction these off to any one of you for a good sum of money <laughs> because they don't make these anymore. But I'm grateful that I followed that advice to collect those uh, for a long time. And they have been very, very good brushes for me. Continuing on with uh, Mr. Parkhurst. Every time you paint, you look over your brushes and you pick out those which look friendly to what you're going to do. I really like that. Well, they look friendly. You want all sorts of brushes. You can't paint all sorts of pictures with the same kind of brush. And then this is really important. Your brush represents your hand. You must give every kind of touch with it. You don't want to feel that you're limited, that whether you want to or not, these four brushes you must use because they're all you have. You can't paint that way. When you get your first outfit, get at least a dozen brushes. As you look over the stockpile and pick out two or three of this kind and two or three of that, you will be astonished to see how many you have. And that is true. I have buckets full of brushes. Yet you don't know which to discard. Don't discard any. 
buy them all. Then if you don't paint, it will not be the fault of your brushes. <laughs> I think that's pretty great. So I want to share with you today what brushes are my favorites and um, hope that this will be of help to some of you that are just starting out maybe and wondering what brushes are um, best to use. So I showed you the low Cornells that are being replaced now under another brand name. And these brushes I started out with in watercolor and um, that's why I have so many of them. And my teacher, um, my first watercolor teacher really is the one that got me going on these and I've loved these brushes ever since. They have a great tip and some of these are starting to wear quite a bit because of uh, the use I've given them over the years, but they've lasted remarkably well. And they're not a, they are not a, a sable brush, they're a synthetic brush, but they have a really good, um, a really good ability to bounce back and keep their shape. So if you're lucky enough to find these brushes, buy them up. If not, maybe I'll part with one of, one of mine for a good enough price. Anyway, so the new brushes that are being made now that um, replace these, um, these great low Cornell brushes are called, I better get my glasses out here so I can tell you correctly. These are um, King Art brushes, that's the, the make, and they are called Original Gold. The series is the 9000 round. And they almost look just like the, um, the old low Cornell brushes, except that they have the gold um, band around them instead of the red. And as I have gotten into using these, I love them. They're really a nice brush. And um, one thing that I will tell you on the number eight, um, I'm just going to compare that in size with the number eight. Low Cornell. I think it's a li just a little bit thinner. So I have been going with the number 10 to use as my number eight. It's maybe just a tiny bit bigger than the, than the, the old Low Cornell eight, but um, I, like, I like that size. It's, it's not um, littler. And they make these in two different, um, two different sizes kind of. One, they're, they're called the um, round or the max round. And I just want to show you the difference on the max round. So here is the number 10 in the regular round. The max round, this is the, um, the max round uh, series is 9020. And this is a size 10. But if you notice on this one, look how much longer the bristles are on the tip of this. And I love this brush. I think if I go back and order more, I will order the Max brushes just because of that really nice extra long tip. Um, and so I purchased a set in most of the sizes that I will be using. I, um, this is up to a number 12 and I may get um, maybe a 14 and a 16. And then this is down to uh, Number seven, I guess, is the smallest one I got. But again, great brushes, and I have found them to be a really, a really good substitute for the low Cornell. Um, let me just show you. Um, watercolor brushes are also um, useful in the flat um, kind. I don't use these very often just because I don't feel like they hold well, they don't hold as much water as the round brushes do. And, and um, I find that I just, I just don't go to these very much. I know a lot of watercolor artists uh, use flats uh, a lot, but they're not my very favorite brushes. Maybe you'll find that to be different in your, in your um, painting. Then another a kind of brush that I really like a lot are these these squirrel mops and um, this series it's a Winsor Newton series 250 pure squirrel um, you can see I've used this one a lot and um, I had a funny experience with one of these 
brushes. I, I really love these, but um, a mouse got it and ate the bristles off. And um, I don't know <laughs> what that was all about. But anyway, take good care of your brushes. Don't let animals get to them. Um, then these are also um, squirrel brushes. These recab brushes are very, very nice mops. They're, they come from Israel, I think. Yeah, there's the Israel on there. And um, I've used these for years, too. They've, they've lasted me a long, long time. And these are great for getting uh, your first washes in at the beginning of a painting. Um, and I, I, just a little bit on care of brushes. I don't really ever uh, wash my brushes with soap. I just rinse them out with water when I'm done and, um, and then try to reshape the point on them while they're still wet. And always, I always try to, um, well, never let them sit in the water with the, um, with the tips down in the water. It will ruin the handle on your brush. I've discovered that on some of mine. But um, then generally, I will put them back in my um, watercolor holder and let them dry upright. Um, so that's a little bit on the care of brushes. These um, mops here are um, are also good. These are, I think, mostly synthetic. This um, Golden Fleece by um, Cheap Joe's, that's one of his brands, and these are a really, really good brush, too. Um, and then uh, there's... There is the um, Legend, which is also a Cheap Joe's product. Um, and they are a, let's see, they are a sable brush. So they are a little more expensive, but boy, they hold um, water nicely. And you can get a, a good point on these. Funny enough, though, I, I generally use my um, synthetic brushes more than I do these but they're great brushes. This is another Cheap Joe's, um, just a big round mop that is uh, really good for washing in skies or um, backgrounds, whatever. And then this lastly is um, a, a really wonderful um, brush make. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with the Rose, Rosemary and Company Kalinsky Sable Brushes. This is a number 10, and I love this brush. Uh, it's, it's really good, and it is more expensive than the others, but it's worth it. it. It really will last a long time if you take good care of it. So that's it on my brushes. Um, I, um, oh, I, w I wanted to tell you where you can get the, the King Art brushes. I'll put a link in the description for you to um, know where you can order those. I think they're also... Um, available on Amazon, but I'll put a link to a site that um, I have purchased them from where uh, they're quite inexpensive. So I will get started now on the little um, demo that I've uh, decided to paint for you today. And hopefully you'll be able to watch um, the characteristics of these brushes as I use them in this painting. Um, I'm going to be using the, the new um, series that I told you about, the uh, King Art brushes, so you can kind of see how these uh, work and, and um, uh, how they respond to watercolor, as well as maybe one of the older um, low Cornells. And um, you'll be able to see how these brushes respond to the paint and the paper. The paper that I'm using is 140 pound weight Windsor Newton. And I like this paper, I've said many times, because of its um, forgiving qualities. It's a nice white paper and it also doesn't buckle when it's taped down and left to dry um, under the tape. The subject that I'm doing is this um, beautiful little scene. Uh, I took this shot as I was at a park with my family members, and um, I just love this looking through the um, the arches there with the flowers on them and these 
these wonderful shadows that connect the two the two sides of the arches together. So I'm going to get started on this and I think I'll take my um, actually I'm going to let you see how the uh, Kalinsky sable works. This is my rosemary brush and I'm going to um, it's got a very full amount of, of bristles. I'm going to start out with my um, with my first triad. That's manganese blue. Permanent alizarin. And for my yellow, I think I'm going to go with uh, yellow ochre. I think I don't want this triad to be too very bright this time. So I'm going to go with the, that as a little bit of a muted down yellow rather than my, um, my cadmium yellow medium. So to start, I'm just going to get a wash over everything on this paper. Not thinking colors, color stuff right yet. Just going to cover everything except over here where these, um, these red, red or pink roses are at the top. I am going to use just a, um, a full or uh, not diluted very much of that um, of that um, alizarin crimson. And down in here I've got um, going to have some yellow flowers so I'm just going to kind of kick in that yellow there where where I know that's going to come in to play also, back in here, I've got the pink and the flowers there. I'm going to leave a few little whites here and there, but mostly mostly just covering this whole page with this color to start. I am dipping back into my um, cadmium yellow a little bit just because of these yellow flowers here. So I am thinking a little bit ahead as to what to what's going to be here in the end. That's maybe just a little bit more of a purple, purpley color coming down on that walkway. But that's going to be kept very light through there. Just putting in that a little bit of the purple there 
And then um, I want to get in while this little stuff here is wet. Um, this might, I may want that just a little bit of a value darker. Um, then I'm going to get in my my shadows across there and can you see what a beautiful point that um, brush is coming to? Actually I'm going to need more pigment in that or, or else I need to let that dry just a little bit more. Yeah, I've got to let it dry a little bit more. It's too watery. And while that is drying a little bit, I will come in here and kind of start on the pink roses in here. And that color is, um, I think that's magenta that I've got in there. I'm going to leave some whites on the flowers. You can see there's there's quite a bit of white on those. Take out a little bit up in here too. As I as I wipe this out, that gets me back to that really um, more of a pastel pink that I want for those roses. Okay, let's see if I can get the shadows in there and, and let them bleed a little bit, but not, I, I want them to keep their shape pretty well here through too. That's better. I'm going to but this this uh, brush has such a wonderful tip. It's really can use it broadly and also very get a very fine line with it. And this, this shadow in the front is probably the darkest, so. I, I'm gonna, I probably want to dry that, but at the moment, um, I 
I want to get this green in right along here so it bleeds down into the shadows. So I'm thinking as I go along here, you know, where do I, where do I need to keep the painting wet? And I, I really want those areas to bleed into each other as they're doing. And then I think I'm going to go ahead and put I'm doing this darker than that purple really is just because I want it to to show up a little better. Uh, I don't want to go that high with that. Okay, and then over in here I got that purple too. So as much as I can get in here, um, kind of keeping this all wet is going to be for the better. Here I'm pulling out a little bit of those um, purple things so they look like they're more, you know, that they stick up like they do there. That green combination was just um, a sap green, ultramarine blue, and I put in a little bit of um, burnt sienna to um, to neutralize it a little bit, so it's not too totally green there. Okay, and here I'm going to paint around those yellow roses as much as I can.
And then the um, green back in here is even probably a little more grayed back. Maybe, maybe not so much, but since it is in the background, it should be a little bit If you gray something, it um, it generally pushes it into the background. I love dropping, um, just dropping in cadmium, cadmium yellow light into the greens, and then you just kind of get that sparkle of of uh, sunlight in there. And if this is still wet enough. That's at the bottom of all those little clumps of bushes along here. I'll let it just bleed a little bit into the into the bottom of those shadows. I'm going to put in some um, dark shadow back here to kind of anchor that foliage down to the ground as well. And it's interesting, I'm still on this brush I, it can act as a very big uh, mop and also as a pretty detailed little brush to paint with. And, and again, that is a, this is a sable, um, rosemary brush. I'm going to start defining these flowers down in here a little more by painting behind with the green.
I don't want all my um, roses to be too round. Some of them are on, you know, being looked at on an angle, so. And as the flowers are getting closer to me, I'm leaving them bigger. So I'm giving myself kind of a kind of a rough map so far as to where things are going to be. <clears throat> Let's start putting in those arches. And I don't want to kill this by putting those in too dark. So I'm going to go with maybe a... I'm feeling like I kind of need a warm... Gray, yeah, something like that. But I don't, I don't want it too awfully dark. I still want it to have that really pretty. Um, see how that paintbrush carries that paint? Oh, love it. Okay, now this one. If I paint it so that it looks like there's little flowers in front of the front of the arch, then you can kind of that helps me describe that these are flowers along here as well. Okay, so
I'll probably come do some correcting on these arch things too. But right now I just kind of want to get where those go. Okay, this one I need to let dry a little bit more here. I've got to put some green through that because it's it's an open. There's two arches going up over there. Okay, I see more flowers that are coming down through here. Okay, and this has got flowers growing on top of it too, all along here.
Okay, I'm going to switch now to a smaller brush. Um, I'm going to go to the um, number 10. Actually, the, the other number 10, the Max, that has this other really nice point to it, too. So I'm just adding a little bit of um, detail on these roses, so you can kind of tell tell what they are. And it's just kind of a, making a cinnamon roll kind of thing inside the flower. Just little abstract shapes that make your eye say, oh yeah, that's a rose. Okay, so that's all that's really necessary on those. And then just some little touches of a really, really dark um, Wow, I don't know if I want that dark, but um, just um, to get dimension in something, I find that you've got to have three layers of um, a light, a middle, and a dark value. And um, if you don't, it just, you don't really get the the dimension like you can with, with three la layers of value. So my, my first wash was the very light. Then as I went in on the roses, that was another... Um, that was a medium layer of value. And see how I'm just kind of creating some stems here and there in the in the roses now. By painting around around those, but um, you can see how how important that last little layer of darks is to make things come out of the background and come forward. And this is a lot of where the the attention is supposed to be in this painting, in my estimation. That's what I loved about this painting in the first place, was that we had this beautiful little entryway in through those pink roses. 
And then I'll do the same thing with these um, yellow roses back here. They're a little bit farther back, so I don't want them too, too um, delineated, but um, still, still somewhat, so there's a little bit of a variation on them. Okay, so I, I did a little bit more um, detail on those yellow roses up here. I still, I'm still going to need to darken my, my arches, I think. Um, but I like just about where I had them. This is a really nice brush too, guys. Really beautiful point, very beautiful tip on this one. Carries the water so well. Okay, so what I didn't do very well here was to show that these are two two separate little things on those. Trellises or what whatever you call those. Yeah, that's bringing that out better now that I've darkened them. And then this one just barely has any space between those, but you can still see the little cross pieces here and there. I see some really, really bright um, sunlit leaves out in here.
And I'm going to continue on with this bright yellow up into the rose bushes up here where there would be some of the leaves that are in sunlight. This, um, this is uh, cadmium, cadmium yellow medium, and it's a very, very opaque paint. So you can kind of cover up stuff if you need to with this paint. And some of that greenery would be growing through those bars too, I think. And these up in here are more, more the yellow roses too, so. Okay, I'm getting pretty close to being done, I think. Don't want to overdo it, but I still want to um, have things readable. <laughs> Decided that needed to be a little bit stronger pigment in there. See how important that darkest dark was to set this stuff forward. And then I'm going to try to kind of do that here so this sort of shows those little um, 
tall floral things that are there. And now it's making it look more layered with um, leaves that are farther back and leaves that are closer up. And I'm going to cut this corner off down here at the bottom. Paints are needing to be sprayed down again. Okay. And still. I'm needing this a little bit darker down there, I think. But maybe one of the things that's bothering me is, whoa, that did it for sure. Yeah, I've got to give my paints a squirt. They're starting to get tacky. Okay, getting very close.
I think just a little bit of dark leaves in here and we'll probably have it. Sorry, this demo is going rather long. Okay, less little shadows under the stuff over here. Kind of and then just Soften those edges just a little bit. Let them bleed out into that shadow. Okay, I um, think I'm there. I will um, maybe do just a little bit more in this to um, add these last little darks, but I think I've pretty well got it and, and I'm happy with it. Um, I think it was a good, a good little demo one using these variety of brushes. Maybe just tuck a little bit more of a medium green in here. That's got it.
thank you so much for sticking with me during this demo and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope the information on brushes was helpful and I wish you the best in your painting pursuits. Keep painting and remember to uh, spend what you need to on your supplies. Thanks. Bye-bye.